and out goes the chicken flag for Jim Redmond. He's won his fourth DT. He leads the World Championship. Well done, Jim Redmond. Jim Redman, MBE, was six times a world champion for the Honda factory during those fabulous racing years, the 60s. This British-born Southern Rhodesian still rides in classic events and his reputation as a raconteur is second to none. Motor racing journalist Chris Carter caught up with him at Elvington in Yorkshire to hear just a few of the stories from this legendary racer, Gentleman Jim Redmond. Grew up around Hampstead and um, uh, West Hampstead, Cricklewood. My family, to dodge the blitz, moved out 15 miles, 10 or 15 miles, to Greenford in Middlesex, right next to North Old Airport, to dodge the blitz, so they got more than they bargained for. And uh, so I spent my young days there. Unfortunately, my dad, um, Got a bit shell-shocked in the war and came home and his brain was very bent and they sent him away for rehabilitation but they couldn't get him right and in the end um, he decided that he'd had enough and he lay down next to the railway line and let the train cut his head off. So that was quite a shock to my mum. It killed her in, in about um, 30 days. So at 17 I was left with a young brother and sister and an elder sister about a year older than me and we were sort of father and mother to the twins. And then uh, when I got to 20, they said, well, the twins are now 14 and they can cope, you know, and you go in the army. And I sat before this committee and said, well, I understand the maximum they can pay me is 15 shillings a week allowance each for the children. And that's 30 bob a week. The rent's two pounds, so that's gone. And I get 35 shillings. You tell me how to do it, I'll do it. And they said, your problem. So I called them a bunch of armchair warriors and told them to stick their army in their country up their backside and uh, left four days later for Rhodesia. Had you done any motorcycle racing? No, I, all I'd done at that stage, Chris, is hung over the fence with my tongue hanging out, wishing that I could have the money to get on a bike. I, would, I did a bit of road racing, but it was on the roads. <laughs> and uh, got chased by the police a few times, but I learned my road racing on the, on the main roads. So how did you get into racing? About 18 months later, I'd saved up enough money for my brother and sister to come out. And um, when they arrived, they started work. My uh, schoolboy school, school sweetheart came out as well, and we got married. And suddenly, we were four of us living in a house with four salaries coming in. You know, I mean, there was Anassis and there was us. And uh, so we had, suddenly, there was a bit of money around, although I hadn't saved any, but we had some. And I'd in the meantime met up with a chap called John Love who was switching from uh, bike racing to cars and bought an ex Sterling Moss Cooper Jap. And I drove the 1400 miles to Port Elizabeth with him to go and fetch this thing. And we found out it was in such bad shape we put in night and day to get it ready for the first race. And in the meantime John hadn't sold his GP Triumph. So he said, look I know you're doing a race, I can't pay you for all the work you've done. Enter the Triumph and race it. So I raced on a borrowed Triumph with borrowed leathers, borrowed gloves, borrowed boots, borrowed helmet, bubble, got everything. So I got into racing and raced around South Africa. Jeff Duke came out with a Jalera and um, he rode around the place sort of setting lap records everywhere. And I concentrated on 1957 trying to win the 500 South African Championship because I planned to go to Europe in 1958. And, um, I didn't get the 500 championship and without checking the score, my old 7R was racking up points everywhere. And I was so disappointed I didn't get the 500, but I actually won the 350 championship, which I found out at the end when they presented the prize. And um, all of it was in vain anyway, because the only thing that I ever did up to that date uh, that was talked about in Europe, they never mentioned that I was 350 South African champion. All Murray Walker could talk about in those days was this is the man that broke Jeff Duke's Jalera lap record at the Peter Maritzburg circuit riding a Norton. Now they didn't know about South African Championship but they knew who Jeff Duke was and they knew about Jaleras and anyone on a Norton that beats his record. 